Blog Talk Radio. Hi, welcome to the Independent Corner with your host, Jonathan Moody. And tonight, we've got a special guest, uh, Tara Noah Smith from the, uh, uh, from the TV show Home Improvement. Hi, how are you doing, Taryn? I'm good. How are you? Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess uh, to, get, uh, to just kind of jump right in, how, how did you get started in acting? Well, um, my, actually, my sister started when she was four years old. She's actually seven years older. And uh, when I was born, um, the agent asked if uh, my mom wanted to send me out on auditions. So I went, uh, did my first job when I was six months old. And um, you know, basically just, you know, my, my uh, you know, agent to send you out and uh, you go on, you know, your parents bring you to an audition and you happen to be in the right place at the right time and you get a job. That's basically what it is. <laughs> Oh wow, cool! So, uh, was that like a baby diaper commercial or something? Um, or? Yeah, actually, it was a it was a print job. Uh, it was a um, the cover of a baby news catalog. I was chewing on some blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that Very was your first role. acting gig. Um, well, that was first. That was modeling. I think uh, acting was like a a gala wine commercial, and uh, right, right was in like a wedding scene and then uh, I did some commercials later on when I was like four and five and, um, and six and then got an LA agent after that and um, you know, actually one of the, I think the third audition I had in LA was, was Home Improvement. Oh, wow. So I got really lucky. And so it only took three auditions before you got like a pretty much a lead role in something? In LA, I mean, I'd been auditioning for years in San Francisco. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really just luck of the draw. It's, it's just, you know, some people spend years and not get anything, and it's not because they're, they're not good actors. It's just because, you know, they're, they're, they're just not in the right place at the right time. You know, it's, it's, all, it's so many different factors. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes, or you can just, you know, win the lottery. Wow. So, yeah, so, yeah, you were lucky to, uh, get I guess, get uh, home improvement for, what is it, about eight years that it ran? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, from um, 1991 to 1999. And, uh, I mean, that must have been a lot of fun just being on the set of that. Oh, yeah, it was a really nice set. Um, I've noticed that, that you know, the the atmosphere of a set is really dependent on the uh, um, the personality of, of the star, usually. You know, it kind of trickles down from there. And with, with Tim being so nice, it was really a nice, just a fun, relaxed, so what was your first, like, experience meeting Tim Allen? Oh, man, I'm trying to remember my very first one. Um, I, mean, I, was, I was seven years old, so I guess I met him in the audition. Yeah, one of the, one of the final auditions. And um, But uh, uh, it's funny, you know, my, my, um, my mom, when she got the first script after I got the part, uh, you know, she'd never heard of Tim Allen before, and she reads the script, and it's all about grunting and tools and all this kind of, you know, almost sexist remarks and things like that, and she's just has no idea what what she's just got into, you know, gotten me into. But uh, my dad, who was on the on the set at the time, you know, and, and met him at home, was trying to convince her, "Don't worry, it's actually very funny." And uh, he pulled it off. It's not. It's much better than uh, on paper. But yeah. um, and I, you know, I guess that his grunting and everything is his. Uh, you know, that's his calling card right there. That's what everybody knows. His trademark. You know, that's yeah, what everybody knows him from. It's hard to tell that he's, you know, that he's uh, joking and, and being sarcastic about it on paper, you know. When, when he actually does it as a comedy actor in the show, then you understand. But when you just look at it on paper, it's kind of, you know, they spell like A-R-G-H. Like, what is, what is that? <laughs> oh, it just spells R? R, yeah. <laughs> so, like, he's a pirate? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of funny. Like, so they don't actually, yeah, because there's no real way unless they just print out uh, saying uh, Tim Allen grunts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which but I guess yeah, it's easier to say R. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So that must have been a that must have been really fun though to like hang out and um, uh, did you become good friends with the um the pretty much the family? Um yeah, it was a pretty uh pretty close knit set. I mean um. We, uh, I, I ended up becoming really good friends with um, Zachary, the, the kid who played Brad, the oldest kid. 
And um, he was actually not the oldest in real life. He was a couple months younger than, than Jonathan. But um, over the years, yeah, we definitely became friends and, and, um, and uh, hung out and did a lot together. And, um, but uh, you know, everyone was really sweet. We got lucky. We didn't really have any bad apples that, that you know, make it or are hard to work with. So it was, it was fun. Yeah, and uh, I noticed, like, throughout the years that um, you got taller than uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Like, it, it happens sometimes among brothers, you know. Yeah, so uh, did did he ever, like, joke on you for a while, and then you got a chance to turn the tide around? And <laughs> Well, let's just say he, he stopped joking after a while. I didn't, I, you know, uh, I, I didn't throw it back at him, but, uh, um, you know, when I, sometimes when he's looking, he was pitching his hair in the mirror, and I would come up behind him and be able to pitch my hair in the mirror above his head. <laughs> You know, he, he stopped being, uh, he stopped joking too much. But, um, you know, in the beginning, it was it was funny. There were, you know, two older boys and one younger, and, and you know, we acted like brothers. You know, they they kind of teased me sometimes, but, you know, it didn't really matter. It was, it was just, uh, it was fun. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, the thing is, I'm going to be looking at your IMDb a lot, and I know from talking to you earlier that you said that a lot of your IMDb stuff uh, is not true. So I guess do you want to... Um, do you want to say a lot of the stuff that's not true that uh, might uh, might confuse people? Like when they say, like I know that you said you don't you don't actually have a kid. No. Yeah, I, I'm I'm very confused. I one time looked it up on Wikipedia and they said I had a kid, and uh, which I don't. And then they were quoting IMDb, and then uh, so I wrote to both of them, and they both respond. Uh, IMDb said they were quoting Wikipedia, and Wikipedia said they were quoting IMDb as reliable sources. <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody I, had to start it, though. Somebody had to start it, which I just don't understand. I mean, no one would really benefit from telling telling the world that I have a kid. Um, I know, and uh, I wonder who made that up. I just like, don't, there's got to be one understand. person in the world that's just like, um, you know, hey. Uh, you know, uh, Mark from uh, the Home Improvement has a kid. You know what? Uh, it just boggles yeah. my mind, doesn't it? I mean, like, I just who would do that and why? You know, I don't understand. Um, it's funny though. I've tried with both of them, including everyone's, uh, my friends, even my mom tried, and uh, to tell them I don't have a kid, and you know, and it says, "What is your authority?" Or, or you know, ask you your credentials on how you know this. She just put, "I'm his mother." <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't understand. And then, but, uh, you know, almost they probably think, oh, anybody could say they're his mother and blah, blah, blah. You know, like, yeah. why would anybody benefit from telling them that they, you don't have a kid? You know? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's what's so strange. I mean, I guess you just have to be careful with, with, with both of those user-generated websites that, you know, it just, it's so easy. For bro- the easy. wrong information can be, right? Yeah, it's, it's very easy. I mean, so, especially when there is actually something to gain from misinforming the public. I mean, I, I'm not saying my particular uh, situation has got anything to do with that, but I mean, when there's actually, uh, you know, people are, are looking up uh, for real information and, and getting something that's maybe bought and paid for, you know, or misleading, it's, it's uh, kind of sad. Right. It's uh, the nature of all information, really. I mean, just because it's in a textbook doesn't mean it's right either. Right. Um, so what, like, okay, did you, uh, did you actually graduate from USC? Uh, no, I, I just went there for about a year and, um, and, uh, decided that I was studying film there and I realized that, you know, I've, I've been in this business long enough that I've, I've picked up enough that if I wanted to really get into to creating films, I could just pick up a camera and, and set to it, you know? Um, but, uh, I, I thought, Halfway through the year, I decided that I kind of wanted to get away from the business for a while and, and do other things and just explore other options. And uh, you have really no interest in never going back? Not really. I mean, unless it was for something that was really positive and, and served a served a, a purpose for a greater good, you know, maybe something that had to do with the environment or, or something like that. But Like a commercial you know, those, or something? or. Okay. Um, no, I mean the only thing I ever thought of was a a, um, a show where we actually um, build anything from eco houses to um, you know re- renovating old cars to make them run off of biodiesel or make them electric. You know, like kind of a project-oriented show that that 
you know, is is eco minded. But other than that, I wouldn't really want to be in that um, in that business just because there's just so much, you know, there's so much corporate interest and there's so much, um, you know, just kind of uh, just kind of negativity surrounding it that that I'd rather uh, I'd rather do something else. You'd rather do something positive. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so to, to go back though to um, you know your childhood doing all the to doing the show, um, like was was there any funny experiences that you had like during the show? Oh, plenty. I mean, we were on the <laughs> day in day out with Tim Allen was just hysterical. I mean, he you know most of his humor could not be shown on TV. <laughs> Let's say that. Um, you know, definitely not on a comedy show, especially. So it was. Um, it was just, you know, so much fun. Um, you know, people were, um, you know, constantly playing jokes on each other. Um, you know, one, we had one guy, uh, was not a very pretty guy. He was a guest star named Benny. And uh, he was supposed to be in a chef's outfit. And uh, during the taping, uh, while he's talking to Tim facing forward, he turns around and he's completely naked underneath <laughs> and walks away. <laughs> just as a joke, you know. But um, let's see. Uh, there was oh, there was all kinds of things. I mean, I got to I got to do so much fun stuff. I had to travel and and everything from giving speeches on the White House lawn to flying the Budweiser blimp to all kinds of really fun experiences. So definitely. Oh, wow. Definitely Were you like ever in like the Macy's Day Parade and stuff like that, or? Not the Macy's one. I was in the um the Hollywood Christmas Parade a few years. Uh, just on different floats, you know, play toys for cops and things like that. But um, no, not the amazing one. And it must be really, it must be really cool though, like to have this as like something that you've done in your life because now, you know, now it's in syn- as mad syndication. Like TBS has like has it on all the time, and I think even uh, Nick at Night just started uh, yeah, going on improvement. Yeah. So you know, so everybody sees it all the time and. Do a lot of people recognize you as playing, yeah, as being Mark? Uh, yeah, especially when I travel. You know, I think in LA, people are, are so used to seeing actors that you know, even if they do recognize you, they don't say anything or you know, show it. Because um, they kind of they kind of leave you alone, right? Yeah, I mean, usually they're they're in the business themselves. I mean, there's not too many uh, other industries uh, in in LA. Um, that's kind of what this town is based on, but uh, um. You know, and especially when I go other places, you know, I have, a, I have a business in Kansas City, so when I go out there, especially, and and really anywhere else, yeah, people still, I don't know how, I feel like I look really different, but I guess people see it. <laughs> yeah. I just read, uh, I just, I never noticed this, but apparently um, the original, uh, do you remember what the original title for the pilot was called? No, I don't. The show? It's called Hammer Time? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And they changed <laughs> it because of MC Hammer? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I'm glad. Hammer time would have been a little, a little odd. But um, uh, uh, so how come? Um, uh, so have you like? Do, are you still friends with a lot of the actors, or do you like still communicate with um, Zachary and um, uh, Jonathan? Um, no, I actually haven't. Um, Jonathan, I haven't seen Jonathan since he, he left the show uh, back in the seventh year of it. Um, Zach had a few conversations with and met him up one or two times. I mean, we were, he's a really sweet kid and, and we, we did get along, but we're very, very different and um, if it was, you know, if it was the type of situation where we were just probably in a regular school, we probably would have hung out too much, but um, we just had really different interests. So, yeah, I haven't really, uh, I've talked to Tim a few times and, and Pat over the years as a mom, hmm. but um, that's about it. Uh, Do you like run into uh, them randomly at any place or? No, no, I haven't, haven't done that. Wow, that would be kind of weird though, right? Like, <laughs> well, that'd be fun, you know. I mean, I don't, don't have anything against anybody, so it's, uh, you know, we just kind of, you know, everyone's doing their own thing, kind of. You know, it's like high school; you want to stay, stay friends afterward, but everyone moves away and, you know, starts new lives, and it's really hard to keep in touch. Yeah, and uh so um so after pretty much after home improvement, um, which was I mean, that was pretty much most of your you know, uh childhood, right? Yeah, from seven to fifteen. 
7 to 15. Wow, that's a pretty good amount of uh, time in your childhood to kind of be pretty much doing that, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, most of what I can remember, definitely. And, uh, well, I guess that, that that's really cool that you had a lot of those great memories that you can just, like, keep, but in the same sense, you probably wish that you could have had, do you kind of wish that you could have had, like, a, maybe a normal childhood? Um, no, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't really regret much. I mean, there's definitely, like, gaps in my knowledge, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, just or experience. Um, but at the same time, you know, I got to do so many fun things, and and I really don't regret it. I mean, I don't. We have this concept of a normal childhood that is pretty strange. I mean, you really can't define normal for anybody because, you know, someone just going to school in in this town is completely different from going someone going to school in the next town over. So it's uh, you know, and then there's tons of people that are. Well, I've met kids that you know, grew up sailing on boats all their lives and, you know, homeschool. And there's, you know, there's so many different variations that, you know, you just really have to look at it on, uh, you know, did you have a good time and did, did you learn and, and, you know, where are you now? And uh, I feel really good about what's happened, so. Hmm. That's really cool, though. And, uh, well, I guess you really, uh, you know, you really enjoyed uh, doing the show and that, you know, there's there's so there's had to have been so much that you you had done so but that was like pretty much your life right like at well, least your good, good section of it I mean uh, we had um it was we would work usually two to three weeks and then take a week off uh, sometimes two you know let the writers catch up and then um, we uh, would take a, a three month break from April to kind of end of July early August so kind of like. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like a school year in a way. But, um, um, did you did you guys have any kind of like did the kids have any kind of input on what they should do for their parts? You know, like I the writer at one point. <laughs> what? Um, we switched writing staff um, about halfway through the show, and it, right around that time was when I was starting to grow taller than than the other two boys. So the traditional role of them making fun of me and you know just kind of being the younger brother that they they pick on didn't really work anymore because I was taller. <laughs> and uh, so I, at one point I kind of felt like the writers just didn't really know what to do with my character. You know, they had kind of, they had the jock, they had the uh, the smart aleck, and they just didn't really know what to do. So I gave them a bunch of suggestions. Um, but they, uh, that's when they ended up not taking any of my suggestions and making my character go goth, and, or gothic, and, uh, <laughs> which wasn't, wasn't my idea. But, you know, we we did it. We did it for a year. It was funny though, because I I got a lot of fan mail from from people that just didn't really understand that you know that that that's a show and it's you know we're we're actors. Cause they really thought that that was me. You know, I was that I was a Don Goth, and they were either really excited about that or or really sad and were trying to help me. <laughs> so pretty funny. So you got a lot of fan letters from people like back in the day when. Uh, oh yeah, I mean from you know from kids mo- mostly. Couple of people in prison, you know, kind of the from people from usual. prison. Yeah, you know, you get a lot of most 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 actors get get letters from people in prison. It's kind of odd, but it, you know, they, they have plenty of time. So yeah, it's a little it's a little strange sometimes, especially when they say, "When I get out of prison, we're going to meet up," and it's like, uh, never oh. once got one from Charles Manson, did you? No. no. Uh, what, what's uh, funny is uh, my. Uh, my sociology teacher uh, got a letter from Charles Manson. Wow. He sent one to him, and he wrote like an eight or ten page, like you know, letter, and wow. it was just gibberish. <laughs> like it, it really made no sense. It was, you know, it was talking about Bugliosi and all that stuff, but like it was the weirdest like thing because he had just written like a couple questions, and then all of a sudden the guy was writing back a whole freaking novel. <laughs> and yeah, so well, I think. What do you uh, expect? He is, he is Charles Manson. <laughs> what? What do you expect? He is Charles Manson. You know, <laughs> you know, you're not going to get something uh, uh, too intelligible. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it was, it was just like nonsense. So that that would have been funny if you've got something like randomly from like I don't know, like what kind of uh, prisoners? Like like just people that were fans of the show, or um, sometimes a lot of times it was. Um, you know, 
sex offenders. <laughs> so, Ooh. And, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Or, or people, I mean, they were, that was one thing. It was the, it was the, the weird kind of, you know, soon to be sex offenders that were out of prison, that were, or not in prison yet, that were kind of the scarier ones. I mean, we, we would turn over a lot of them to, um, to Disney had kind of a security wing where they work with the police. And, you know, if anyone was threatening or, or just, you know, too out there and, and they would, they would, you know, look out, look into them. And, you know, sometimes it was, I, I remember there was one guy that really had a, he had, it was sort of a serial. He would move on as a kid grew too old. He would move on to another one that kind of fit the same description of kind of, you know, young blonde boy. And, um, he had a, just, he would write all kinds of long letters all about some kid that had died on the Titanic and that his spirit was going to, was going to come in through the golden child who was whoever kid he was focusing on at the time. I think before me was one of the, uh, Matthew Lawrence and then after me was, um, maybe Haley Joel Osment or something like that. <laughs> so I don't know. Just, it, it was, it was some crazy stuff, but. So then they you know, never caught the guy? Was, I mean. Well, he didn't really do anything. He, at one point he figured out where my school was and sent a letter to my school, which, that was the only real, little, you know, bummer thing because he, uh, my school stopped taking me on field trips because of it. <laughs> they didn't want to deal with, you know, they thought it was a, some sort of security risk. Wow. But, you know, he was just a, you know, obsessed, you know, someone that was obsessed with some sort of concepts that, you know, had too much time on his hands. Well, that that is a good thing that, um, I mean, you got a chance to actually, I was surprised to hear that you actually got a chance to go to school, like a regular school, instead of just being taught at the um, um, set? During the uh, weeks off, and you know, we would get off in April, so I'd finish out the school year uh, for a couple months. Uh, so, yeah, I would go. Um, I, I did homeschooling for a little while in junior high and then did two years of high school and, uh, and then um, was able to, to graduate after that. But, uh, um, you know, it would be in between. You know, mostly my, my education was on the set, but, you know, they would work with the outside teachers and I would go back there when I wasn't working. That's that's cool. So you got a chance to, um, uh, you know, did you get a chance to, like, hang out with, like, just regular kids that you, you know, had nothing to do with acting? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, a lot of my friends were, were people were just kids that I'd, you know, met at different times that, you know, didn't have to do with acting, too. So, um, you know, and a lot of them <laughs> were actors just because, you know, it's L.A., so. Yeah, so pretty much that's they have to be some uh, they they usually do something in the business, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know. Um yeah, I remember like Dan Washington kid Washington kid went to my school and, you know, some other kids from Nickelodeon shows and things like that. So you know, just here people are pretty used to it, you know. Hmm. That's really cool. So, um yeah, so uh, that that's good to hear. And it's also I guess, you know, being being able to hang out with all these people that, um, you know, the actors. Did you hang out with any of the other child stars? Like, you know, like, um, like, did you ever hang out with, I don't know, who, uh, you know, anybody from, like, Full House or any of the other, like, a- uh, ABC type shows? or? Yeah, so I knew um, Jody Sweden. She was uh, kind of the, you know, the middle daughter on that show. We hung out a lot um, on Full House. Uh you know, not the not the Olsen twins who they were younger. I remember, I remember I met the Olsen twins at a at a early ABC party when they were like four or five. <laughs> and <laughs> did they ever uh, say you funny. got it, dude? No, they were. Uh, their mom actually told told me. She said, "I'm sorry, my my uh, my daughters are being cranky right now. They're very tired because <laughs> <laughs> they weren't really talking much. It was pretty funny." <laughs> Well, that's awesome, though. Just knowing, you know, nowadays they're 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 huge as, you know, yeah. like they've got their own companies and they're doing their own stuff. And, um, you know, they're definitely the people who they they like to milk the um, fact that they're, you know, doing stuff for, uh, you know, helping children out and doing that stuff. But, um, but you know, Jody Sweet and I haven't heard from in a while. Like she was, uh, you know, uh, I heard she got into some like her own personal problems and all that stuff, but you know, I have I haven't heard what what's going on with her. I think she got a divorce or something. I mm. I don't know. 
Have you heard anything from about any, uh, about no. him? No, not really. No, you haven't been keeping up. No. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, I bet, I mean, I bet it's been, like, one of the things where, you know, you're kind of done with that life and, you know, it's just, it's gone past you, right? Yeah, I'm, you know, I've just, I've been really busy, you know, started a, actually working on, started one company and working on a second one. And, um, you know, I've just been, just been, a, you know, living a, living a definitely crazy life, but not, um, not really to have to do with the business anymore, so. Yeah, so you said you're um right now you've been uh starting your own like you you started your own company a while ago, right? Yeah, it's called Play Food and it's a a general food company. We have a we manufacture uh, cheeses made out of cashews. So they're actually, you know, vegan non-dairy cheeses and um that that people that that can't or don't like to uh, eat dairy can have, you know, not soy based like some of the other ones. And then um I also have a we also do catering. I have like a big orange uh, biodiesel powered catering truck and do events around town, sets, and I'm also keeping it at um, this space that I'm building right now, uh, an art gallery. We call it Open Space. And it's like an art gallery, um, performance venue, wor- artist workshop area where I can, you know, members can, can use the tools and, and build and also teach. We all teach kids how to how to make art from recycled objects, and um, and adults too. Everything from welding to circus performance, and yoga, and you know lectures and things like that. Um, and uh, and then like a, a retail store selling everything you know everything handmade, of course, but you know things like jewelry and clothing and um, you know, people's music and CD and books and stuff like that. And then um, my catering truck is uh, providing kind of a uh, it's a little, you know, vegan, organic, vegan fare so that people can eat there. So, yeah, it's, it's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, are you are you a vegan yourself or? Yes, I am. Okay, so that's how, is that how you got basically into it? Yeah, I mean, I um, I was with a girl for a long time who was a vegan chef, and we started the company together. Uh, it was, you know, her kind of initial um, initial recipes, which we eventually refined into uh something we could market and um but uh yeah she um you know so we, we we started we, we still actually um own the company together but she sort of stepped away I'm, I'm pretty much running the whole thing now oh wow so uh now that you're running it and everything um like is is it is it harder to run it all by yourself or uh, no, actually, it's a lot easier. <laughs> a lot easier now. Um, yeah, I mean, she's a very um, creative person, and um, but you know, part of that, you know, when you see, most successful artists have a manager of some sort, <laughs> and you know, you have to because what you know, when you're really strong in your your right brain and you know, and creative, often that leads to deficiencies and and you know, sort of the more boring but practical side of of business. So. Um, you know, I like to, I'm really into finding the right people and, and working with them and, you know, delegating responsibility. And um, she had a hard time doing that, but at the same time had a hard time actually following through with the more practical side of, of, of business. So she's kind of moved on. Oh, okay. Well, so she's, she doesn't pretty much do anything, you know, uh, you know, uh, concerning the company? Well, what happened was that she tried to, um, she was it was out in Kansas City where we have our manufacturing plant, and she had moved out there after we had separated. And um, I found out after you know I was still funding everything coming out there, and as we after we started actually selling products for a few months, uh, I uh, found out that she had created a new business that had under the same name that only she owned, and without me knowing, and was trying to run all the profit through that business while I was still paying for everything through the old business. And um, so I had to basically get a, a court order to stop her from doing that. And after after that, she just kind of went away, she just walked away. So uh, uh, do you still like doing, you know, doing the business stuff? Do you think, I mean, is that something you, you think you're going to keep doing for as long as you can? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I, I wholeheartedly believe in the business. It's definitely been growing ever since we kind of got things back under control and, and um, you know, kept it with the original business that, that started it. 
and um, we're about to go. We're in, we're all, we're in Southern California. We're in uh, around the Midwest, around Kansas City, and um, we just changed the recipe so we can freeze it. And now we're about to uh, we're going nationwide before the end of the year. So oh wow! It's, so it's I should be able to see it in my stores. Yeah, well, um, we're uh, yeah we have an East Coast distributor who's who's waiting for us for, for the new recipe, and uh, we'll be um, yeah we'll be uh, all over soon. Exciting. Oh, wow. And it's called Play Food? Play Food. It's uh, playfood.org. So it's a um, pretty much just a, uh, what you said it was a vegan, uh, non-dairy cheese with, um, what was it with? Cashews, raw okay. cashews. Oh, wow. So uh, it, does it taste really good? or? Yeah, <laughs> people love it, especially, you know, even non-vegans. We got a lot of, well, a lot of our customers are, are not, you know, non-vegan. I mean, it's really... It, there's a lot of soy cheeses out there, but the ones that actually kind of behave and taste like cheese still have this thing called casein in them, which is the protein in cheese that makes, or milk that makes cheese kind of elastic. So it kind of defeats the purpose because that's kind of the worst part of cheese. It's like, it's what actually they make Elmer's glue out of. So it, when you eat it, it actually kind of gums up and, and clogs your whole system. So you know, vegans and people that don't want to have that don't eat those soy cheeses. So there's only like a couple products on the market that that don't have that in there, and they're just not, you know, they're 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 not too tasty. And and so it's been as a vegan and you know in the vegan community, I know people have been desperate for a good cheese that they can, you know, we, we, with ours you can make macaroni and cheese or grilled cheese sandwiches and all kinds of things like that. So. Oh wow! So this might be the new cheese that people people have been craving. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, I mean, at least among the you know among people that that, that don't want to eat dairy, it's uh it's, it's very frustrating. You kind of have to give up a lot. But you know, as as I mean, just uh, across the board, you know, the the products, more and more products are coming out over the last few decades that that make being vegan and, and just really easy. I mean, there's so many new fake meats and and um you know, fake dairy products and things like that that, you know, just weren't available in the, in the 70s and 80s when, you know, when veganism first really kind of became a movement. You know, back then it was brown rice and tofu. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's come a long way. Wow, and yeah, there's soy stuff. There's See, I was saying, since I'm not a vegan, you know, um, but I know, like, uh, some of my family are. Mm-hmm. So, uh, they yeah, they, they make sure to, you know, like, eat... Uh, you know, they they make sure what they're, what they're eating is you know uh, non dairy and you know everything like that, all the craziness. Um, but I'm you know as a as a person, I've tried some of that stuff and I'm just like nah. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd prefer the real thing myself. So maybe I'd, I'd, I I I'll try uh, play food when it comes out. Oh great, thank you. And see what it tastes like. And I'll, I'll let you know. <laughs> cool. But, yeah, uh, we make uh, four different flavors. It's a uh... Like an American American style cheddar, you know, that's the one we can make like vegan grilled cheese and stuff like that out of. Like a, a nacho one, which you can make quesadillas and everything out of. Uh, a cream cheese and a sour cream. Oh wow! So, uh, but and so was that? Uh, how did you like end up doing that? Like, like how did you end up uh, making cheeses and stuff? Well, I just I saw you know once I went vegan, you know I, I saw it as something that you know, was a a niche that needed to be filled that wasn't, you know, and then my, um, you know, the girl I was with was, is, is a very talented chef and, and was making, um, was making these, you know, cashew cheeses that everyone was just loving. So we, uh, you know, we decided we had to bring it to the market. Wow. It's definitely a long process, but it's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's worth it once, once you get it going. Yeah, that's really cool. And, uh, yeah, that's, the, you know, like, because I never understood how somebody could actually go and make cheese, you know, like how they how they think, oh, man, cheese hasn't been, you know, there hasn't been a new cheese yet, you know, in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like how somebody's, like, brain process uh, picks that up and, like, oh, well, you know, I, they could do this, you know. So yeah, it's, well, it's, it's got to be a really creative process right there. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. You take... You know, the key is to take raw cashews. You know, roasted cashews don't work, but raw cashews, soak them for a while, um, like, a, you know, overnight. Uh, and then, depending on how much water and how much, um, what seasonings you put in there, pretty much 
it it's like you know it, you can make any dairy product. We make ice cream with it, which is a new product we're going to come out with next year. Um, you know, but any basically any type of uh, you know milk or or any type of dairy product, the cashew can will work for it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And do you did you try any other kind of like um like ice cream or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, we we have a saucer machine, so we make a batch uh, of, of like a thick cashew milk that's sweet, and you put it in the saucer machine, and it out comes the delicious cashew ice cream. <laughs> and uh, uh, is that a hit where you're at? Like, because uh, I know you, ha- you guys had a uh, you guys had a restaurant right for a while. Well, that was actually my house. <laughs> oh. Yeah, kind of a we would we would do uh, fundraisers for a nonprofit, and and also just try to help us train and, and promote um you know our products and our company but um yeah i i, I had, uh, was building furniture for uh for the restaurant so i brought it all to my house and we used to throw these really insane you know re- dinner restaurant night parties where we'd have bands and performance artists coming in and and um i uh i like to collect art and we'd, or we'd have feature artists so you know turn part, part of the house into a gallery and it was a uh, it was fun definitely uh push the limits of what you can do with a house. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that you guys uh, treated it basically like a restaurant. Um, how yeah, many I mean, people would be there? No, no, oh, man, we would have to limit it because, I mean, we could seat about 70 to 80, depending on how, we're, how much we packed it in, but we would, in a three-hour period, we would get 150 people. Wow. <laughs> and that's, that's limiting the, the invites to around 80 to 90, and then still there's so much more would come because, I mean, really, it's just a, you know, there's so many vegetarians out there that, you know, and there's just not, even in L.A., there's not that many restaurants. Um, you know, places like San Francisco and New York are better for it, but L.A., there's just, you know, there's not too many uh, good restaurants, so people are always looking for the new thing. And, yeah, I'm surprised you promote. guys haven't, like, opened up, like, an actual restaurant, like, trying to serve well, stuff. Um, I was starting to. Future. I was starting to, but I... I um, then everything kind of went down with my my ex and and partner, and realized that I was no way that I wanted to open and run a restaurant by myself. And my passion lies more in in art and and teaching and, and building. And so decided that I could use the space I had that I was working on as a restaurant as a as an art gallery and, and workshop space, and still have my truck parked there serving you know a more limited menu because I already had a a licensed catering truck. So. I didn't need to make a you know a building that wasn't a restaurant into a licensed restaurant when I already had a kitchen. So, hmm. yeah. so I'm I'm guessing since you you keep saying that you're uh you know you're big on building and everything mm-hmm. and doing that stuff. Uh, I'm guessing that um, the um uh that the the fact that um uh home improvement must have helped in a way like you know you know try somewhat to, my uh. My dad was actually, was actually a really amazing engineer. He, um, I mean, before he was my age, he had built a boat. And by the time, um, around the same time I was born in 84, he actually had built a plane from scratch. Um, but he, 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 is a, he taught me a lot. I mean, you know, the, the show was based more about what not to do, you know, because cause it was, that was the humor of it was, you know, Tim always messing up and things blowing up or, or breaking. So... You know, I didn't learn too much from that, but um, you know, building has just kind of been in my in my my genes and in my family. So um, I really love making functional art, like you know, furniture, and and um, the latest thing I've been making is um is uh been taking bicycles and making them into these sort of a uh, whimsical, almost electric car at things. But um, I started uh, for um, for Burning Man, I don't know if you, if you know what that is, but um, but uh, yeah, it's actually people are starting to to be interested in them, and I'm starting to to make them for customers. It's kind of fun. Oh, cool. So, um, yeah, and and doing the like I was gonna say say about the about the show, like though, uh, you, did you get the chance to? Because um, I, I was watching when I was watching Home Improvement yesterday. Um, which was the reason why I guess I contacted you about this is just because I saw, you know, I've wondered what you were up to, you know, and everything. But um, I had uh, watched uh, Home Improvement yesterday, and I saw 
I, I saw like Zach, uh, Zachary Ty Bryan, uh, well, like basically um, cutting fire, you know, or cutting metal with fire, like that episode. Do you know which one I'm talking about? When he like got grounded. Yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah, and uh, he had gotten grounded or something, and he, you know, got a chance to do that with um, Tim, and so that must have been like a cool thing where you guys got to be around tools and. You know, you still got to, you know, you got to learn what not to do and got to learn how to, you know, basically hang out and uh, just sometimes play with tools, right? Um, yeah, I mean, they were props, so we really couldn't, you know, mess with them. <laughs> so I didn't really get to do much. I didn't really start doing lots of building until after the show um, when I started making furniture out of, out of found, you know, recycled materials and things like that. But, um uh, no, I mean, it was it was definitely a fun set to be on just because we did have so many different, you know, fun props and things like that, you know, lawnmowers with jet engines on them and, you know, crazy shit like that, crazy stuff like that, so, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, I mean, that's great, um, but it, it, it's good that, that you got a chance to, I guess, hang out with everybody and, like, do these things that a lot of kids... I guess you won't get a chance to do, you know, like you had a life that a lot of kids probably kind of wish that they had, um, in a way, you know, being on set and hanging out with these cool people that have gone on to do, you know, uh, have, you know, pretty, uh, pretty awesome careers, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I always just consider myself so lucky, you know, I really got to, got to, you know, really have a, a fun, you know, uh, intriguing life that, that, you know, I mean, I think everyone's lives are 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 really beautiful and and, and you know unique and, and different and intriguing themselves. So, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard to compare, but um, I just yeah, I definitely feel like very very fortunate to been able to do what I've been able to do. So, you know, I'm very very thankful for it. Were you ever really like nervous when you're on the sets or anything like that? Like when you first started out acting, were you kind of nervous that you're gonna like mess up in front of the live audience or anything like that? Not too much. I mean, you're, you, by the time we go in front of a live audience, we've been practicing all week, and um, you know, say for a few episodes, my parts were pretty small, so it was, you know, it's always pretty easy. Um, let's see. I remember getting nervous at one point because uh, not on the show, but I, I was on the on a talk show where they had me, uh, uh, I was, where they had me drum, and I was a little nervous about that, because I never, uh, at that point, I had never uh, played music in front of a crowd, and now I was doing it on TV, <laughs> so. Was, uh, well, uh, I mean, you must have practiced a lot, right? Yeah. So that you wouldn't mess fun. up, right? Yeah, definitely, but it was, uh, it was still, like, you know, it's, it's a, it was a brand new thing for me, so it was, it was a little nerve, nerve-wracking, but it was fun. Oh wow! So that's that's cool though. That uh, I mean, are you a good drummer? I'm um, okay. You know, I kind of I, I play a little bit of it. Um, sorry, the siren, but I, I play a little bit of um, uh, most instruments. But it's just more of a you know hobby. I don't really I'm not trying to make something out of it. Really? Like, uh, well, I mean, you, you is that how like do they write that into the show because you're doing it or? Actually, yeah. At one point. Um, I was I had started a band with um, the uh, kid that played my gothic friend. Uh, his real name was Kalen, but the, on the show they, his character's name was Ronnie. And you know, we'd become friends and actually started a band on our own. And the producers uh, found out about it, so they actually did write that into the into one of the shows where my character and and his character Ronnie started a band together. <laughs> See, that's that's the great thing about, I guess, writing for TV and for, you know, how many years they go on, all of a sudden they can be like, hey, what's going on in your life? Yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's basically copy what's going on in your life, you know? Yeah, definitely. Funny. Yeah, uh, the other thing, too, is I, I um, you know, my dad was a pilot, so not, not professionally, but, you know, a uh, private pilot, and um, so, you know, I, he, I was learning to fly as a kid. Yeah, so they ended up writing that into the show at one point too, where I was taking flying lessons from from Wilson. <laughs> oh yeah, um, were you were you sad when when you heard that he passed away? Oh uh, yeah, he was such a great guy. I mean, he was just such a joy to to work with. He was, you know, just a big kid at heart and and so sweet. And um, 
you know, but he did smoke a lot and he did drink a lot, so we always kind of knew that, you know, it was either his lungs or his liver was going to go at some point. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would ask you, uh, did you ever get a chance to see his face? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, he didn't hide. <laughs> that would have, that would have been funny if he kept, he kept it hidden the whole time, like, yeah. you couldn't even see his face, like, you know, when you're on the set. People did ask if he was, you know, disfigured or if he was, you know, the uh, Phantom of the Opera or something like that. But uh, no, he had a, he had a, he had a, his face was perfectly fine. <laughs> no, that's the thing. I think because I think didn't he do a lot of voice work? Isn't that pretty much why he kept it like that? He's he's done a lot of. I know he did a lot of voice work because he was in like talk radio and a few other. Yeah, yeah, he had a really rich, you know, beautiful sounding voice. So. He, do everything from KFC commercials to you know, talk radio and all kinds of things. So, um, but no, it wasn't like a, a conscious decision on his part. It was more, it was um, just Tim and the original creator's uh, idea to have this mysterious neighbor that that you know you never knew what he did and he seemed to know something about everything. And they kind of just took it a step further where you just you never saw his face and it just kind of became a you know a gimmick or a gag that they they ran with okay well um so after like or well during home the, the last few i guess few seasons or whatever of home improvement uh, i guess you had done a few other stuff like i saw that you did like little bigfoot too were you like a, did you have a big part in that yeah i mean that was just a kind of a ridiculous thing i mean it was a you know it's a kind of made for tv and straight to video type movie I mean, it was one of those things where it's like you know, we we shot it in three weeks, and half of that was in uh, Big Bear, which is like this kind of resort lake town up in the uh, up in the mountains. So, some things. Hey, you want to you know work for three weeks and get to play in, in the mountains? And sure, why not? <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, it was it was a pretty funny little little movie about a uh, uh, like a you know baby Sasquatch and you know meeting some camper kids and you know strange things happening after that so but yeah, it was fun uh, i was actually working with the um, oh man it's been so long i haven't, don't remember his name but the the youngest kid from roseanne on that show, oh on that michael movie. fishman oh. michael fishman yeah yeah that's that's cool you know, better than i do <laughs> yeah uh I, you know and the funny thing is i didn't even look on imdb i, I remembered his name because <laughs> i haven't uh you know uh, that would be another interesting person to have on my show. If, uh, I don't know what he's up to. Yeah, I never heard anything. Yeah, he was a, he's a really smart kid. I definitely he's a little older than me, and I definitely you know uh, enjoyed his uh, his company. Um, I'm sure he's doing pretty well. He had a good head on his shoulders. Yeah, um, I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty sure if anything, he's probably probably got out of the business after Roseanne. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, apparently he was in artificial intelligence. It says on IMDb. Oh wow! Uh, he was playing, but he had like a small part as a teen in Van. But still, mm. I mean, being in a Steven Spielberg movie at all is pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, but yeah, so it's you know it, it's good. So you're doing that, and did you like um, doing that as a different thing? Like, didn't you find it kind of fun to play a different character? Um, well, I never really got to play very much different character. That was kind of the the one thing about about. At least, you know, my career was kind of, uh, you know, what was a little sad. I kind of just kind of played generic American boy most of the time. Uh, you know, I didn't really have any parts that was, you know, very, very strange or different um, or too much of a challenge. You know, I was kind of just, um, you know, more playing myself just because that's, you know, as I said, sort of playing a, a standard kid. But, um yeah, it was definitely fun to work with, you know, different cast and crew and go to travel and, you know, it's always it's always a good time. You know, sets are, are definitely, you know, usually fun environments if if the, uh, if it, it, you know, mainly if the uh, the lead is, is good and, and doesn't stress everybody out. <laughs> you probably had had uh, leads that stress people out? No, I haven't. Really, myself, um, maybe, you know, just hearing stories, um, you know, even like from Roseanne and stuff like that. A lot of our cameramen were, um, used to work for Roseanne until, in a, in a, 
kind of a tantrum. She ended up firing them all. <laughs> so yeah, I heard about that. I heard she was very like quick to hire, quick to fire, kind of. Yeah, well, our our the same creators that created um, my show, not created her show and and Cosby show too, but when they created Roseanne, shortly thereafter, she basically you know once it got going, you know she the 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 star has you know, has all the power in that situation, and she ended up kind of firing them. You know they created the show, but she got rid of them and you know got her own writing staff. Well, that, that, it, well I know like. I know Joss Whedon had wrote for uh, Roseanne like as one of his first first things. The guy who created Buffy, so uh, um, you know, and a few other. I think a few other people like I think the uh, the lady who went off to do uh, Gilmore Girls wrote for her yeah. for a while, and so like all these kind of big people have worked for her. But I don't know. I guess they had um, probably also gotten fired or something, or something <laughs> you know, because yeah, no. it was. Kind of like not a, an easy person to work with, from what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's very funny. Definitely have to give her that. But I've never met her myself, so I really, you know, I can't can't judge myself. But you know, I've definitely, I said we, I had some some people work on my show that used to work on hers. So I've heard some stories, but um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's you know, it's just a, it's just one of those things. You know, they're they're the one. It's their show. So, but what? How they act and behave just sort of trickles down, you know. Makes the if they're really if they make the stage manager tense and the director tense, then they're gonna have to, you know, they're gonna end up taking it out on, on the next, you know, departments down, and, and it's just you know kind of or or you know it can be really easy and, and, and fun. So, so uh, I guess uh, were you friends with the creator of uh, Home Improvement, Matt Williams? Yeah, um, it was it's, it was Matt Williams, uh, David Finestra, or sorry, Carmen Finestra, and what was it, David? David McFadden. McFadden, yeah. And um, oh, they were great guys. I mean, they were they were they were fun. We really, you know, they moved on and, and started working on other shows. So we were really sad and kind of missed them when they left. But um, yeah, they were they were good. I mean, they were definitely uh, had a had a good touch. I mean, Cosby was Cosby show was very popular and Roseanne was popular so Oh they um, had created the Cosby show as well? Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. Like they I guess they created a lot of the hit A B C shows. Yeah, definitely. So um but yeah, so like I guess like Home Improvement was playing around the same time, like, you know, around the same block as like Wonder Years and like Full House and I mean they might have been on separate days but it was like like eight o'clock you know, eight PM yeah, we, or something. You turn on and uh, you know if you had like a late dinner or whatever, you'd be watching that. Yeah, we started. Um, we started out in this time slot between Full House and Roseanne, so we were kind of a transitional show between a very extremely family show to Roseanne, which was you know a little more adult. So. Yeah. See, when I was a kid growing up, I'd watch Home Improvement, I'd watch Full House, and Family Matters, and those stuff, but. I, I never really got into Roseanne because I was just too young, I guess, at the time. And I'm watching it now more, or whatever, when it's on like Nick, uh, Nick at Night, and it's it's more funny now than it ever was when I was a kid. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, you know, much more adult adult content. You know, it, it was gritty. I mean, that's what it was good about it. it. wasn't It didn't portray this, you know, picturesque, perfect sitcom family like so many other shows did. You know, it was more of a a little more realistic in a, in a lot of ways. It's just because you know, it was, uh, it was more, you know, a little more gritty, a little more, um, a little more adult. Yeah, like, um, well, a lot of the shows are like they tried to do that after a while when they realized that those shows were kind of big, like because like Full House and uh, Family Matters showed the kind of like you know, idealistic uh, family, you know, like the ones everybody wants to wants to have, yeah. and then shows show like too. Step by Step and. Um, you know, and Roseanne and things like that showed the kind of the the more realistic, you know, bickering families, you know. Yeah, definitely. And Home Improvement, I guess, was more of a idealistic kind of nice family. Like yeah, a, I mean, we people still thought we were, you know, people would comment that we were, at least with like the, you know, kind of the different situations and, and you know, the sort of like the interaction between the 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 you know Tim and Pat and and things like that you know it was somewhat realistic in that sense I mean uh, I think um, you know Patricia really fought 
to make it more realistic. I mean, I mean, I heard her so many times. Just we would get a script on Monday, and you know, she would then we'd have a little like writers meeting after we read the script, and and uh, you know, I heard her so many times to say, "Hey, a mother wouldn't say this." You know, this is not you know, this isn't really realistic. You know, a lot of times it would just kind of they would kind of sacrifice reality to go for a joke, and um, she was really good at, at bringing it back to, to reality and, and, you know, trying to make it um, sound a little bit more plausible. So, um, but I know she got, really got, it, it got a little tiring after a while doing that. So. And so she stopped after a while? Um, no, I mean, the show ended. I mean, we just, you know, we uh, basically, you know, Tim didn't want to do it without her, and she didn't want to do it really anymore unless plus all the you know, the kids were becoming adults you were what you were yeah. about 17 or so at the time right no well, 15 yeah 15. yeah okay. that was turning 18 and jo- jonathan already left so like what uh, did he leave just so he could get a movie career or um or he told everyone he was going to college but then yeah he did end up doing another movie but you know it's kind of you kind of get a little when you leave a show before it before it stops you know, you kind of get a little bit of a, a reputation in in the business. And oh, that's yeah, that's not kinda, good. Yeah, it's kind of harder to. You know, I've noticed other people that have done that have, have found it harder to get jobs. You know, afterward. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because I haven't really seen too much from Jonathan lately. Like. No, yeah, I don't really know what he's doing. Yeah, and and Zachary too, as well. Like, I mean, those guys have. Kind of like they, everybody's kind of stopped, I guess. Um, but I, I'm sure they still they still try to do stuff, right? You know, I really don't know. Last time I talked to Zach was in 2003. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was a, the lead up to the Iraq War, and I asked him how he felt about that, and he goes, uh, "Well, I know we're going to disagree about this, but you know, I think it's we need to root out the terrorists where they're at." And I tried to explain to him that. That the terrorists weren't actually from Iraq or from Saudi Arabia, but it didn't really matter to him. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he had his own personal opinions, right? So uh, yeah, did you we guys were, have we like? I mean, was, did you guys ever fight on your personal beliefs and stuff all the time, or um, a little bit? We didn't fight. I remember we had kind of a long, ongoing discussion about um about homophobia and <laughs> about <laughs> how it was. Uh, you know, I was against it, and he was, you know, kind of for it. <laughs> so he, he grew up. I mean, he he had kind of come from kind of a, a kind of rural background where where you know a little bit, you know, where kind of these these ideas were were more accepted. And and you know, it, it was um you know it was it was it was funny. I mean, he definitely. Um, I mean, this was kind of early on. He definitely grew, and he was a real a big sweetheart. He had you know real big heart to him. So. He just, you know, was trying to grew up in a in a different world. Well, that's good that he. Um, I mean, I guess you know, I guess the L.A. would probably change him a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, you really can't be homophobic in this town. <laughs> <laughs> especially, yeah, especially doing showbiz. Well, uh, no, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it doesn't get you too far. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't know he was. Well, I guess that's one of the things that you learn here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like that he was uh I guess he was like that but you know that that's okay I guess if he was like that that's the way that he was grown up and you know you can't really you can't really change a person themselves they have to change so yeah I mean I think he he's definitely learned to be more tolerant and but you know it's just like we're, we're just very different you know I, I, after the show I ended up you know I bought a Prius and he bought the kind of like Escalade <laughs> you know just kind of had a a different outlook on life. Okay, so you brought the uh, more of the um, like environmentally safe car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he invited, you know, he did the uh, the gas guzzler. Yeah, you know, just so we we were always very different, but um, you know, we did get along, and we were, you know, we never really fought or anything on on during the show. We just, you know, would just kind of learned and and grew with each other. So were they uh, like what? They were like two years older than you, or? Uh, three. Three. So, did you guys ever fight over girlfriends? No, not really. I mean, sometimes I always liked older girls, and so sometimes you know, I'd bring a girl to the set, and 
that you know, I was into and they'd end up being into, you know, into John or Zap. But, you know, it was it's just because they were the same age usually and I was younger. But, uh, you know, that was, that was, you know, more my problem than, than theirs. So. Um, did you ever, like, I mean, did you ever have, like, did you ever start dating anybody of the, like, co-stars that came on, like any of the guests? girls uh that were on the show no not really um i can remember now um yeah it was funny actually recently i was uh catering an event and this girl comes up to me and goes hi remember me how was your girlfriend and i run through this quick list in my head of wait no 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 who is this girl and then i realized oh then she explained oh she played my girlfriend on the show <laughs> went, oh okay <laughs> do you remember which one that was or uh, I only had one. I'm trying to remember her name, but I, it, you know, they, um, it was like the last year they, they had me, you know, kiss a girl on the show. So, um, she was like a, a redhead girl. I don't, I'm terrible with names. I don't remember her name. <laughs> but, I'm sure uh, she appreciates that. You know, yeah, I know. Girlfriend I mean, on the show. What's funny is, is I actually had a girlfriend at the time, so she was, you know, she had to, had to be okay with me, <laughs> you know. Kissing another girl, but you know it was just a, a a TV kiss. It wasn't anything serious. Yeah, exactly. Especially like during during the TV and stuff. Like um, you know, uh, you know, TV stuff. It's not it, it's not like that. You know, you don't uh, you know the kid uh, a stage kiss doesn't mean anything compared to like, yeah. uh, you know an actual like you know uh, a uh, what is it a uh, you know a real kiss a romantic yeah. kiss or whatever. Yeah. No, nah, not at all. So yeah, so um, and but did you did they have to actually like teach you how to kiss right or? No, <laughs> no. They kind of let you pretty, do that on your own. Yeah, it's pretty pretty simple. <laughs> well, I guess you said that uh, you you were like 15 at the last year, and you said it was the last season that they had you do that. Mm-hmm. Actually, I was 14. I turned 15 the uh, like the last day. Oh, <laughs> for real? Yeah. Wow. So it was like happy birthday. Oh, the show's ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and so then after that, you I guess you you had graduated early, right? You said like a year early or something, or uh, two years. Yeah. Well, I guess kind of three. I skipped a grade early on, like well, I skipped kindergarten when I was really young, and then um, so that was it. So I did two years of um, uh, of homeschooling, where the, basically the set teachers were able to to uh, kind of just kind of run and and, and create their own curriculum. Um, but because of what they were doing, the school ended up counting those as high school credits. So um, after two years of high school, they basically had enough credits to, to graduate. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, it was fun. Got to go, you know, went to college for about a year, and then and then moved on. Oh wow. So um, as far as like uh, after after that, you just went right. Did you do anything like before you started your business and everything? Well, um, well, I ran away when I was 16 um, with my with my uh, girlfriend at the time, Heidi, and who was who was much older. She's the girl I started the business with, and um, but uh, so yeah, I ran away when I was like 16, 16 and a half, and um, were your parents just not like you know happy with you dating her or something or? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was a lot of reasons. I mean, mainly, I was just young and wanted to be on my own and and you know, kind of, you know, assert my independence. Um, but, yeah, it did kind of come down to when they found out her real age. Uh, so she was, I was 16 and she was 32. Um, they were, you know, rightly so, very upset about that and uh, trying, you know, try to stop me. And, you know, when you're, one thing a parent can't really do with, with a teenager especially is tell them that they can't see somebody <laughs> That just makes them want to see them even more. <laughs> so you know, I end up I end up running away, and I, I mean, I really, unfortunately, you know, I caused a lot of pain and grief to my family. They've, they've since you know we've gotten back together, and you know they've forgiven me, and I've you know tried to make it up to them. But um, but at the same time, it did kind of it was a good experience just to you know when I ran away, I didn't have access to any money or anything like that. So it was a good experience to you know live and work on my own and. I ended up going to Maui and um, living there and doing everything from work trade and 
you know, landscaping and, uh, and living on a tent in the, on the, on the beach for a while. And, you know, it was a really interesting experience and lived on a organic farm here in California for a while and then moved to, uh, Kansas actually. So. Oh, so did you, I guess, did you and your, I guess, did you guys get, you got married, right? You said. Well, it was, um, we got, we had a common law marriage in Kansas that, uh, which is funny because after it, it, you know, made the press and we kind of were exploiting sort of a archaic law that had never been changed in Kansas that allowed a, a 12-year-old boy and a 14-year-old girl to be married basically if they just lived together and said they were married and, you know, common law said they were. And, um, uh, you know, I did that so that I wouldn't be, uh, it allowed me to become at least partially emancipated uh, so that I wasn't technically a runaway anymore. So it was sort of like a, you know, a protective thing. But um, what's funny is that after we did that and got in the press, the Kansas state legislator went back and changed the law and made it retroactive. So according to the law now, well, we never were married. So it wasn't, you know, they 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 they, uh, they changed it. So yeah. So on IMDb it says you're divorced. <laughs> well, um, after I. Um, after I stopped my, my ex from trying to steal the business in court, she responded by filing for divorce. But, you know, we were, we had separated. She had had a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend. We weren't ever planning on going through a divorce process just because, you know, our marriage was just kind of nebulous to begin with. But, you know, as sort of a retaliation, she tried to, you know, she filed for divorce. So we're, actually, we're going to be going to court in November for that. Because I, I filed for a, a counterclaim for annulment just because, as I said, the Kansas state, Kansas legislator had changed the law. So, plus, I wasn't really, you know, there, there's other laws that say that that you know a minor can't enter into a contract like that. So, um, you know, we'll, we're going to find out in court in November. But um, yeah, so I'm not technically divorced yet, but I may never have been even married. So we will see. <laughs> oh, the court will have to decide. Yeah. yeah. Whether you guys are even married. Yeah. <laughs> It must be like, I mean, it must be weird for your lawyer to get that, like, as a, you know, uh, I guess, was it the lawyer? That, I mean, do you still have the same lawyer that you had since you were a kid, or? No, no. You know, I, I got a, a family law. You know, she did it in Kansas, or Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, so you know, I got a, a local family law attorney to help me out with that. Um, but, yeah, I've definitely had a few different lawyers at different times say that this was one of the, that mine was one of the strangest cases they've dealt with. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that that must be kind of a weird thing to think about, you know, like, huh, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, like, oh, my gosh, uh, uh, you're not, we're not sure if you're really married or not, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, that's just, like, that's got to be a weird case to deal with, but, um, yeah, especially when you're dealing with a minor, you know, I mean, well, you're not a minor anymore, but you yeah. were at the but, time, right? Yeah, when we actually got when we had it, when we did our common law marriage, it was oh, I was a minor. That's, yeah, and so um, that's that's crazy though that uh, that I guess so. If you went to Kansas City now, or was it Kansas City you said? Yeah. If you went to Kansas City now, uh, that laws changed, so you know technically nobody, so nobody listening to this show can go over to Kansas City and you know, and get married just by living with somebody. No, not anymore. <laughs> oh, see, I, what, was it because of uh, what, what happened with you, or was it just something that they just, just ch- decided to change? Um, well, yeah, I mean, they decided to change it after pretty much right away after it got out in the press. I think they were a little, a little embarrassed. <laughs> oh, um, you're like, whoops! <laughs> That's the technicality. Yeah, it's one of those things that you know people don't even. It was such an old, you know, law that. You know, it's not even on the regular law book. Common law is is is, um, is different. So it's like they probably none of them probably even knew about it until uh, until it was in the press. And then all of a sudden, everybody knew about it. And see, that's the thing you you had mentioned, um, you know, in the phone earlier before the show that uh, you know how did I know about this stuff is through um, you know not through IMDb but through like magazines and articles. And I just. I guess I don't really read that much about that stuff, you know. So I had really I had no clue what was going on with your, you know. Like when I looked on your, I think you had told me like, 
oh, you were doing all these uh, the, the vegan, uh, you know, processing food stuff. I I didn't even know anything about that. You know, I had no clue. Yeah. Like, I, it was completely new to me. So, as you know, to me, I was just wondering what was going on with your life. You know, which is, you know, kind of cool to to know that uh, you're still out here doing stuff. You know, like you're not acting, but you're out, you know, in L.A. still trying to, you know, do your own uh, do your own thing. Yeah, it's fun. You know, I, I definitely, especially working with the food in the food business, where you're, you know, actually serving people and and you know providing providing food for them. It's really a rewarding experience. You know, much more than than acting in a lot of ways. You know, especially on TV where you're really sapping for cameras and then you know that audience will see that a month later, you know, and you're not, you're not there in their, their living room to, you know, be a part of it. You're, you know, you're, you're doing a future episode. So, you know, just that feeling of being able to hand something, somebody, uh, hand somebody something that, you know, they're going to eat and enjoy and, you know, it's good for them and having that interaction. It's just really, really fun. You know, I mean, I just like, I like the more kind of personal, personal relations that you get in different businesses, you know, within art and food that that uh, you just don't really get with that thing. So. Cool. And, yeah, and did you, were you, like, when you were on the set of Home Improvement, did you ever, uh, uh, did you ever, like, meet a lot of the uh, audience? Um, kind of. I mean, we'd, we'd have, you know, we'd have audiences the last night, but, I mean, uh, on Fridays, but, you know, they're kind of, you know, we're all real busy working, you know, so it's kind of hard to to be able to, you know, actually sit down and talk with them because, um, you know, we got to, when I'm not working, then another, you know, scene is being shot, so you have to be quiet. But, um, you know, I mean, I definitely got to interact with, with fans, you know, and, and did a lot of personal appearances and stuff like that, and that was always fun. But it was still, it's always been a little hard for me just because I, I just don't really understand, you know, maybe because I've, been in the business all my or was in the business all my life, but I just I've never really been able to understand kind of the uh, attraction to you know uh, you know celebrities and things like that. I mean, when you really look at it, your your plumber and your electrician and your your teacher are, are far more important to you in your life than the, the laughing dancing figure on, on the TV, you know. But yet, you know, no one asks for, for for your plumber's autograph. It's just kind of a weird quirk in our society. Um, but maybe you so, should yeah, do that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> and the next time that a uh, plumber asks for your autograph, go. No, how about this? You give me your autograph. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're more important to me than I was yeah, to you. I mean, you're fixing my toilet. I huh. I appreciate you, you know, far more than uh than anyone on TV, you know. So it's 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 funny, you know. We just kind of live, and I mean, it's mainly that it's just the concept that you know, you know, not only it that you know other people besides yourself, are watching the same show. So lots of people know of this, you know, this character or this person. So that's kind of where the kind of celebrity thing comes in. But it's still, you know, I mean, actors are just people. I mean, and oftentimes, you know, not even the best people. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of funny. I mean, personally, I think that, you know, meeting directors and, and writers are, are is, is more cool just because I feel like they're more responsible for, you know, for, you know, whether it be a TV show or a movie, you know, they're, they're more responsible for it, you know, as an artist, you know, when you're, when you're an actor, it's kind of like, you know, comparing a movie to a painting, when you're the, an actor, you're kind of just the paint, <laughs> you know, it's the director and the writer that are really, you know, the, the painter, and, you know, and then, of course, you know, the whole, the whole crew is, is making it happen, but, um, you know, as far as, like, appreciating someone's art. I mean, there's definitely some really amazing actors out there that, that, you know, really can do a lot and, 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 you know, make a, made something beautiful. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's, it's more the, it's more the director and the writer that are, that are doing it. Unless you're, uh, unless you're someone like Ed Wood, who you becomes like a Picasso, where you quite don't understand, uh, the yeah. art. <laughs> Where it's just like you know, it's all it's all mixed up. Yeah, you know? definitely. But definitely. um, yeah, I mean, I guess you uh, you know you got to meet a lot of the directors on the set, you know, work with them, and 
all that. Were there any particular directors that you really liked to work with that were different and a lot of more fun? Yeah, our first two were really amazing. Um, our first one was named John Passman, and he was just he was so much fun. He was he was great, great director. And the next one was also really good, Andy Kata. So both both of those I really liked, just mainly because they um, were there for a few years at a time. And then the last two years we started rotating all kinds of different directors, so we didn't really get to chance to get to know them very well. Um, at one point, Tim directed one, and also Pat directed an episode, too. So, so how, really was the, how was it to have them direct you? Oh, I mean, they were easy. I mean, we, we, this, you know, we had already been doing it. You know, we were in our eighth year, so, you know, they were, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty simple for them. But, um, yeah, you know, it was, it was fun. You know, they, uh, they definitely, you know, knew what they were doing, so. Right, and I think a lot of the a lot of the main stars of a, a TV shows end up directing, um, you know, episodes of the shows that they're in. Like, I you know Patrick Duffy directed um, uh, some of like Step by Step, and I think maybe I don't know if he did directed Dallas at all or anything like that. But mm-hmm. I know also like oh well I don't know, but I, I think probably also Bob Saget probably directed like an episode or so of Full House. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, a lot of them end up, you know, working with them so much that, you know, they yeah, might Yeah, you just well, kind of learn it yeah. through osmosis. And is that what you basically, because I know you said that you had uh, you had gone to uh, USC film school and, and you you got accepted, which, I mean, that's pretty that's a pretty big uh, honor in itself. Um, yeah. Like, how did you pretty much get accepted? Like, I know it's... It's it's pretty tough to get accepted into the film school there. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of lucky. I had some, you know, some previous experience, which I think helped count for it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just, you know, went through the application process and, um, you know, was able to, they, they accepted me. But, uh, so, yeah, I was, I was definitely very honored. And, you know, it's a great, great school. I just, I realized, though, that, you know, spending another four years of my life studying something that I'd, already been doing most of my life and was, you know, in a way kind of sick of was just not really the route I wanted to go. You know, I really wanted to, to you know, spend those years traveling and, and trying new things and, and, you know, before I settled down on, on any one thing. So, you know, I've definitely, definitely gotten to do that. So, um, yeah, but it was, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was, it was interesting going to college when you're still being driven by your mom. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah, because you what, you graduated when you were fifteen. Yeah. So after fifteen, did you go right into trying to go to U, uh, USC? Um, I no, I did a uh, one semester at uh at to get I needed two more credits for to be able to go into USC. So I did a took a couple classes at a, at a junior college for a semester, and then and then went to USC. So, um, but. Um, yeah, I was I was still very young. Yeah, so you're uh, so you said you got driven by your mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at least until I was 16. So yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so I'm sure like people are like, what? Is this some some kind of child prodigy? <laughs> well, I wasn't the only one. There was there was a lot of definitely you know some some other kids that were that were younger than 18. Yeah, so. Well, it's uh, it's probably better than being driven by a uh, limo, and just coming <laughs> off like a complete prick, you know, like. Yeah, no, you know. I never did that. I mean, did you ever? I mean, you probably got driven in limos, right? A lot, like. Um, sometimes, I mean, when I do certain events, you know, where they would, um, you know, some somebody would fly us out to you know some different you know state and you know do some sort of personal appearance or. Or event like that, then yeah, they would oftentimes get a limo or a town car or something like that. But no, I never did that on my own. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, silly. you never got <laughs> driven to like school. Oh no, 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 I would, I would never live that one down. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if yeah. it came, in, it came out of, uh, came out of the limo from, you know, and into school, your kids would pick on you, like the, your friends would pick on you so bad, wouldn't they? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay. Stay grounded. <laughs> you can't, you know, can't let that type of stuff go to your head. It's just, just so silly, really. When you think, when you take a step back and look at it. That's yeah. 
uh, and and uh, a lot of your um uh you know I guess the, I guess you did stay grounded pretty much right most of most uh, of your life right uh, I try to <laughs> I'm all over the place still but I not not no you know I'm not riding the limos and and uh you know trying to you know trying to think that I'm some you know God's gift to earth or whatever but um you know I try to definitely been living a, a fun and crazy life exactly and uh you know yeah i guess did you have uh, do you have any other things that you want to talk about about a home improvement or about your life that has happened that you know that you think that we haven't touched on yet uh let's see well definitely um had a profound experience when i first went to uh first went to burning man have you ever heard of that um, I, I think I had, like, somebody, um, one of my, uh, I guess, is it, it's not just in L.A., is it? Oh, no, no, it's, um, it's kind of, it's more of a West Coast thing, just because it's located in, um, Nevada, but, um, it's been going on for about 20 or so, 20 or so years now, but, uh, basically, uh, a, a city is built, a temporary city is built out on this flat, kind of, like, salt plain, like, desert in Nevada, and so basically artists come out and for, you know, they, some of them start building early, but for a week it's open to the public and, um, you know, people come out there and, you know, build these beautiful art camps and also take cars and buses, even giant big double articulated buses and make them into, um, basically roving mobile art sculptures that anyone can jump on and, um, the, the the most important thing about it, though, is that there's no commerce. You can't buy or sell anything there. And it's not even, you know, it's not even what they call the barter economy. It's what they call the gift economy. And everything out there is just basically people bring an excess of something, you know, whether it be food or drinks or, you know, some sort of, you know, gift or toys or things like that and, and give it out. And it's sort of like the world's biggest potluck. And... You know, it's really, it's really, um, you know, the reason why it was so profound for me was that, you know, for for a week you get completely out of normal society, you know, with all of its advertising and, you know, pressures and to do this and do that and, and you know, um, and, you know, for a little while <clears throat> you're basically just completely free of all that and allowed to be, you know, just human on your own. And, and with, now it's that, you know, over 50,000 people come out to this and, you know, just watching, getting to experience everyone all at the same time going through that and, and, you know, learning how to live together without, you know, without commerce, without advertising and, and media and all that type of stuff. It's just a, it was really a, a profound, beautiful experience. And, um, you know, I've now, you know, gone back to a few years now. Uh, it's, um, I definitely recommend it for anybody. It's, it's, uh, it just happened a couple of, uh, it, last month at, uh, the week leading up to Labor Day, so got to wait another year. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely. I mean, in a way, it's sort of a life-changing experience, just because you know you're you're getting to partake in a completely radical, different culture for a while that you know is, is extremely unique in uh, in America. Oh, well, that's really cool. And uh, when uh, how did you get like involved and see this kind of stuff? Um, I remember reading about it as a kid. And be intrigued by it, but um, you know, as I when I turned 18 and moved back to LA, you know, I ended up running in, in different circles and, and and you know, knowing people that have gone and you know, hearing stories and you know, you can check out the pictures on the website on BurningMan.com and you know, you just see the most insane art. I mean, I'm, I'm really a you know, I really love the arts and you know, go to everything from you know, underground gallery opening art shows and or to you know museums and things like that but i've never experienced something as as dramatic and as intense and and beautiful as burning man as far as the arts i mean people just really spend you know all year making things and actually they get the organization gives out grants to people for for really big projects so you know you go out there and you're you know seeing something that costs you know even hundreds of thousands of dollars and in weeks to produce and it's just really, it's just really beautiful to see that type of free expression and creativity, you know, being, you know, 
happening, you know, because it's just, it's so hard, you know, most, most people don't, don't ever get to, to see that or be a part of it, so it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. I'm surprised you didn't end up, um, you know, uh, you didn't end up doing your own project out there. Uh, well, I have. I, I, uh, I've been part of some camps, some theme camps, where we build, you know, erecting domes and, and, you know, putting on, you know, putting on parties and, and then, um, I've, uh, I've built a few, that's where I started building, um, I took a, a recumbent tricycle and, and made it into a, uh, um, a big white fluffy creature that, what, that multiple people could ride on and, and, uh, with its own sound system and lights and all that type of stuff and, this last year, we um, we were given a VW bus that had been chopped up and made into this uh, a bar in the back, and uh, I brought a slushy machine and we uh, we just drove around serving drinks and shooting off flamethrowers and it was, uh, <laughs> it was quite a good time. <laughs> wow, that sounds really cool. Yeah, you can um you can check out I said Bernie dot com or you can see my pictures on on MySpace and uh, MySpace slash Terrence Smith. Or myspace.com, Terrence Smith. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely check that out. And I, I, I checked out your MySpace, and I guess uh, you're still. You said you were still good friends with Kaylin, the guy who played Ronnie. So yeah, uh, yeah, he's still on your MySpace and stuff too. So yeah, we're still good friends. So he actually called in this interview. I kind of uh, missed call, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's um, he's still really into music. He's got his own uh. Um, his own group now, um, and music um, company called Temp Fate. I'm actually going to go see him play uh, tomorrow night. Oh, wow. Press. That's probably what he's calling you about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seeing if you're definitely coming over to that. And, yeah. uh, I guess I'll let him know that um, I'll uh, I'll try to TiVo, because I guess the uh, couple of the episodes with you guys together are coming on, uh, it looks like they're coming on Nickelodeon soon. Oh, okay. uh, like a night to dismember and uh, what a drag uh. Uh, are coming on <laughs> on there. So um, I guess those are he's only done about four episodes, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, but uh, I'll definitely check those out, and uh, maybe if he wants to come on my show sometime, let him know. I'd, I'd sure. love to have him come talk about his uh, band and uh, and his acting career because looks like he's been in a lot of a lot of stuff, you know, just different, like, yeah. you know, projects. Yeah, well, he, he checks his MySpace a lot, so if you ever want to contact him on that, definitely can. Yeah, definitely, I will. And, um, okay, well, I guess, um, unless you, do you have anything else, do you, that anything else that you might have wanted to get out there and wanted to talk about? Um, no, that's about it, you know, it's, all I can say is that I've just been extremely lucky, and even though I've had to deal with, you know, my own mistakes with, with a kind of a crazy ex-wife and partner, you know, I still feel like that, uh, you know, life has just really been really fun and beautiful, and I'm really thankful for it. So I really, um, you know, it's been, uh, it's been great, and um, hopefully I can continue to, to do fun things and, and and do good for this world. So that's well, hopefully, uh, hopefully IMDB will leave you alone and stop <laughs> yeah. saying yeah. things that are not... Um, Exactly true. Yeah, I still it just baffles me. I really just don't know who or why. I mean, we never even it was never even a joke. Like you know, when I first read that about and then saw that they named my alleged kid Nolan Eric Smith, it's like we didn't. That wasn't even like a joke around my friends. So I don't think it was them. You know, I just don't. You know, it's just someone that was uh, bored and decided to make something up. I mean, that's just uh, that's a weird idea. To get bored, so bored that you go, you know what? I, I, I'm gonna name Mark's kid, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna but, name Terrence's kid to something that, uh, you know, because I'm just, just typing in here and I, I don't have anything else to do. I know it's a really strange thing. I mean, it, it kind of just shows you, kind of, you know. Unfortunately, a lot of our a lot of our culture, you know, isn't inspiring to people. You know, they don't like. You know, they don't end up finding their passion and, and and doing something, you know, constructive with their time just because, you know, a lot of times there's they've never been shown any options. I mean, that's one thing I really want to do with with this space is, you know, in LA and a lot of other school systems they've removed art from from the curriculum, and so you know it's been kind of up to the private sector to try to fill in that gap. And you know, it's it's 
difficult, but I mean, I mean that's one one thing that I think is is really important is just exposing kids to to art at a young age and, and just other possibilities of what they could could be doing with their lives instead of just you know kind of going on the conveyor belt <clears throat> to the to the cubicle you know or or you know end up you know uh, you know living their lives in a way that that, that you know where they're not really happy or, or you know uh, they're not really expressing themselves so. It's, it's just kind of sad, you know, that our, our society kind of forces that upon people a lot of times. So, um, so I want to try to at least offer, you know, my help in, in, in you know, setting creativity free. So when you do that, I mean, there's so much latent potential in everybody. I, uh, I uh, actually hired some people to help me build furniture at one point that had applied for work, you know, in a vegan restaurant, but... I found a few that, you know, never built anything really before, but had, you know, done a little, uh, I mean, never built furniture, but had done a little construction or, you know, you know, used a hammer once in a while. And, and um, so it's kind of fun, you know, I ended up kind of working with them and teaching them. And then after a little while, you know, I just could, uh, just let them go to say, all right, you know, build a pair out of material. And, uh, and off they went. And it was just cool to watch that, that, you know, those kind of latent potential come out when you just give someone the chance. Yeah, exactly. And hopefully hopefully people's uh you know, people will stop you know, will will learn that uh, you know, that they, they gotta get it their own life. And, you know. <laughs> well yeah, I mean especially the the internet really kind of you know, it, it offers people a place to you know, kind of live vicariously through others sometimes and you know, it's sad. I mean, it's a great tool. There's, there's so much, you know, good that can come out of it, but there's also a lot of, a lot of negativity. So, you know, or just kind of oddness. You know, like the, my, my fake son. So, what are you gonna do? <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And um, if there's anything else that you need to promote at some point, let me know. Like, if you want right. to come on and promote something that's going on that you want people to. Uh, or you could just send me an email, let me know, and you know, we'll sure. uh, we'll try to try to get the word out about stuff. So um, yeah, just give me, you know, just let me know, or you can give me a call at some point and tell me what's going on, and um, okay. I'll let everybody know. All right. Well, thank you so much. Just a word, and uh, I guess yeah, if anybody wants to contact you through like MySpace, I guess um, I wasn't sure if you wanted that information out, but oh, uh, it's okay. I mean, I'm I'm people find me all the time on there, so. It's, yeah, uh, obviously I found you on there, which, so, I mean, really, yeah. it was really weird because, like, yesterday, all I, you know, what I was doing was I was just going through, uh, figuring out what I was going to do with my show, and, you know, I had Tuesday slot open, so I was like, um, I just kind of saw that you had a MySpace, and I wasn't even sure if it was you or not, <laughs> you know? Because yeah, I don't really, I don't really talk about the show. There's actually some, some imposters on there that do, you know, say that they're, uh, they're me and talk about the show and stuff like that. But you know, I just kind of talk about what I'm doing now. And yeah, I figure my my pictures are pretty crazy enough that you know, if people look at them, they realize oh, this probably is the case. <laughs> so exactly. Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully people uh, people yeah, get I mean, it, you know, and everything. Um, but thank you so much uh, for coming on. And you know, I guess if anybody wants to contact you, it's myspace.com/slash Taryn Smith. So, That's it. Yeah, um, or um, or Open Space Gallery. It's my it's my project. Okay, cool. Okay. Is it Open Space Gallery just one word? Yeah, and you, it you know you can link it's linked off my page. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, and um, I guess I put you on my um, my independent corner thing so people can find you on there. Like, um, that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put a lot of the guests that I had recently so people can contact them if they want on my MySpace. Cool. On my MySpace, so um, if they want to say hey, if they enjoyed the show or whatever, or, you know, or say they enjoyed you on Home Improvement, which I think a lot of people, uh, you know, I think that's one of the things you'll always like kind of be remembered for. So um, yeah, <laughs> people, you know, people probably, like I said, yeah, people probably come up to you all the time, and they, I mean, not maybe all the time, but you know, enough where they they know who you are, so. Or they at least ask. Do they ever like you're ever on a plane and somebody just asks like, "Are you from Home Improvement?" Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, 
Yes, that's it. Especially when I travel, you know, because, um, yeah, you, you know, you're stuck next to somebody. That, and but, well, just, you know, just people aren't, you know, are, as I said, in L.A., yeah. they're so, you know, they're so over it. Just, you know, you see, you can pretty much walk anywhere in here and see someone that's been on TV, but, um, you know, they're not, not so used to it in other places, so. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's always fun, you know, it's fun to, to meet new people that way, you know. But, um, and fans. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, nobody ever, are, nobody's ever come up to you and said, oh, that show sucked. <laughs> I don't know. People have said that too, and I totally appreciate that too. You know, I really, I actually like to hear that sometimes. It's fun. Um, you know, because, I mean, you know, the show's not for everybody. I mean, personally, I really like, I like Seinfeld and, <laughs> and some of the other shows that we're, we were running against. So, um, you know, I, I, I definitely uh, appreciate that. So. That was, that was yeah. the funny thing is I, I heard an interview with Ryder Strong, and he was not a big fan of uh, Boy Meets World. Yeah. Like he said that was a show that he would never watch. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, it, it's a, you know, a lot of times, you know, you're, it's, the process is really fun, but, you know, the product, the finished product is, you know, that's not something you necessarily watch. But, you know, what's funny is a lot of people that are work in TV don't watch TV. <laughs> so, you know, because it's a, you know, you, it's hard when you you know you, you kind of know the whole process. It kind of takes away from the, uh, the, the illusion. Part. Of time. But um, but you know, I just also just you know want to. You're working in TV all day. You want to go do something different <laughs> at night. So yeah, well, uh, thanks, and um, yeah, and I hope that uh, more people. Um, I guess everybody can check out uh, Home Improvement on TBS. You know, and uh, I guess it's also on uh, uh, Nickelodeon. So anybody can check those out, and I'm sure uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people still watching those shows, or even new people watching those shows. Yeah. Definitely. So hopefully you'll get some new fans too. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> All, right. All right. All right. Well, you have a good night, and thank um, you. hope uh, you know. Hopefully, if you have any more stuff to talk about or whatever, just let me know. We'll have you on the show. Okay. Thanks so much, Alan. All right. You're welcome. Okay. All right. You have a good night. All right. You too. All right, everybody. That was uh, Taryn uh, Noah Smith, who was in uh, Home Improvement. Thank you guys for listening tonight, um, and I hope that uh, you guys check out his uh, MySpace, myspace.com slash Taryn Smith. And um, it's on my uh, independent corner, uh, MySpace, that I started uh, yesterday. So check that out and uh, write messages and let us know and comment and stuff like that about what you thought of the show, uh, what you thought of the show and hopefully what you guys um, thought about, uh, you know, uh, hearing about his uh, vegan lifestyle now and all the stuff that's going on with that. So uh, thank you guys for listening and have a good night.